Anna the prophetess is mentioned only in three sentences in the Bible, but they are very important. Written from historical accounts, this story depicts what could have been Anna's experience before she came across Jesus. Anna had an intense love for God from a very tender age in her life. She stayed with her devout parents, who taught her about the Holy Scriptures in every manner. Anna, my dear, always remember to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes, Father, I will always trust in God and follow His ways. From her earliest days, Anna was surrounded by the sights and sounds of temple life, for her father served as a priest in the sacred precincts of the Lord's house. As a child, Anna's heart was captivated by the beauty of the temple, its grandeur a testament to the majesty of the Almighty. She would often wander among its marble pillars, her young eyes wide with wonder. And she always paused to listen to the chants of the Levites and the prayers of the faithful. At a tender age, she was married to a young man from her own tribe, their union a symbol of hope and promise for the future. Our love is a blessing from God. Let's always keep Him at the heart of our home. Sadly, their happiness was not long-lived, because within a few years of their marriage, Anna's husband died. Anna was heartbroken, but she didn't lose her faith. She turned even more to God, finding comfort in prayer and worship. Oh Lord, please give me strength and comfort in this difficult time. Instead of remarrying, Anna dedicated her life to God. She moved into the temple, where she spent her days and nights fasting and praying. Her devotion was unwavering, and she became well known for her piety and wisdom. Anna, your faith is an inspiration to us all. Your prayers bring comfort to many. Thank you, Father. I am grateful to serve the Lord and our community. Anna had a special gift. God had blessed her with the spirit of prophecy, allowing her to understand and speak about God's will. She often shared her insights with those who came to the temple, offering hope and guidance. Trust in the Lord, my friend. He has a plan for you. Pray with me, and He will guide your path. Despite her age, Anna never grew tired of serving God. She was over 84 years old, but still full of energy and joy because her heart was filled with the love of God. Anna, how do you keep your faith so strong? My dear, when you fill your heart with God's love, you will find strength and joy in serving Him. This wrinkled, saintly woman is described as never leaving the temple. She worships with fasting and prayer every night and day. Sister, you look unwell. Let me help you. I will also give you some bread and water, and then we can pray together. Anna helped the woman sit down and brought her bread and water. Then they prayed together, asking God for her healing. God's love heals us all, my sister. Keep faith, and you will regain your strength. Anna, like many faithful Jews, was eagerly awaiting the arrival of the Messiah, the Savior promised by God. She prayed every day for this promise to be fulfilled, believing deeply that she would see the Messiah before she died. There was another person in the temple who too was waiting for the Messiah, Simeon also known as Simeon the Elder, or sometime Simeon the Righteous, lived in the same temple. He was a devout man of Jerusalem who was filled with the Holy Spirit and loved by everyone. Simeon loved spending his days in the temple, where he would pray and talk to God. He was known far and wide for his kindness and his gentle spirit. Every day, as Simeon walked to the temple, 
he would greet the people as he passed along the way. He would stop to chat with the fruit vendors in the market, and he would pat the heads of the children playing in the streets. Simeon had a smile for everyone he met, and his presence always brought a little bit of sunshine to their day. One morning, as Simeon was making his way to the temple, he noticed a woman sitting by the side of the road. She looked tired and sad, her shoulders slumped with weariness. Simeon stopped, offering her a friendly smile. Are you all right, my dear? He asked gently, his eyes filled with concern. The woman looked up, surprised to see someone taking an interest in her. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little down today, that's all. Simeon nodded sympathetically. Sometimes we all have days like that. But remember, no matter how dark things may seem, there is always hope. God is always with us, even in our darkest moments. The woman's eyes brightened at Simeon's words. Thank you. Simeon watched her go, his heart filled with a sense of peace. He knew that he had made a difference in her day, and that made him happy. As Simeon continued on his journey to the temple, he couldn't shake the feeling that something special was about to happen. Little did he know, his life was about to change in ways he could have never imagined. Simeon was a devoted scholar. He was tasked with translating the Hebrew scriptures into Greek. That day, he had trouble in translating in one of the passages. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. How can this be? It defies reason. He was so perplexed that he took a knife to erase the word virgin in order to replace it with young woman. Suddenly, a bright light filled the room. Simeon, faithful servant of the Lord, do not let doubt cloud your heart. Simeon was surprised at first. Then he was curious. Who are you? Why are you here? I am a messenger from the Lord. The words you translate are a prophecy, a divine truth that will come to pass. Do not hesitate, Simeon, for your work is part of his grand design. But how can I translate what seems impossible? The time will come when you will see the fulfillment of this prophecy with your own eyes. Until then, have faith and continue your work. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Jesus. With the angel's message, Simeon's faith was fortified. He knew the promise was true and that the day of fulfillment was near. Simeon, you seem different today. What has happened? I have received a message from the Lord. The time of his promise draws near, and I shall see the Messiah before I leave this world. Truly, Simeon? Tell us more. Be patient, my friends, and keep the faith. One bright morning, a young couple named Mary and Joseph entered with their baby boy Jesus. They were going to present Jesus to God following the Jewish tradition of firstborn sons. Simeon, who was at a different place at the time, felt a powerful nudge in his heart. He knew that he had to go to the temple courtyard immediately. His heart raced with excitement. Could today be the day? When he saw Mary and Jesus with the baby, his eyes filled with tears of joy. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Mary and Joseph were amazed at Simeon's words. They knew their baby was special, but hearing it from Simeon made them feel even more blessed. Anna, the prophet, was also there in the temple. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph and she began praising God. She had been waiting for the Savior too. 
When she saw Jesus, she knew instantly that he was the promised one. The temple, usually filled with the sounds of prayers and daily activities, now buzzed with excitement. People whispered about the baby and the words of Simeon and Anna. And so, in the grand city of Jerusalem, in the midst of everyday life, God's promise was quietly revealed. Jesus, the light of the world, had come, and those who believed were filled with joy and hope. Long ago, before the birth of Jesus, there lived a man named Jeremiah. Even before Jeremiah was born, he was chosen by God to be a prophet. He lived in the land of Judah, and all throughout his life he received messages from God that were meant for his people. He had an important message to tell the people of Judah, but they didn't want to listen. Repent of your sins. Turn back to God or else destruction and exile will come to our land. You see, during Jeremiah's lifetime, the people of Israel had lost their way. They were worshipping all different kinds of false gods and were turning away from the one true God who was sharing his messages with Jeremiah. Jeremiah! Stop telling everybody that they're doing the wrong thing. You're discouraging the soldiers and spreading defeatism. You should be punished. Yes, let's put him in prison. But I'm only sharing the message that God has given me. I'm not trying to discourage anyone. I'm trying to warn you about what will happen if you don't turn back to God. Jeremiah was thrown into prison for speaking the truth, but even there, he continued to speak out. Lord, please, give me strength to keep sharing your message, even in this difficult situation. I know that if I am true to you and your word, you will guide me correctly, even if these people do not want to listen. Jeremiah, the king wants to speak with you. Come with me. All right, I'm ready. Jeremiah, I heard that you have a message from God. What is it? The message is that if we don't turn back to God, destruction and exile will come to our land. But if we repent and follow God's ways, we will be blessed. I don't like this message. I don't want to hear it. Take him away. Lord, Help me continue speaking the truth, even when it's hard. Oh, this man is not going to stop. We must put an end to this. But Jeremiah's enemies were not satisfied with his imprisonment. They wanted to silence him completely, so they devised a plan to get rid of him for good they convinced the king to give them permission to throw Jeremiah into a well, where he would starve to death. I don't know if this is a good idea. Jeremiah is a prophet of God. We don't want to anger him. Don't worry, your majesty. We will take care of Jeremiah once and for all. He will be put in the well, and he won't be able to share these messages from God. 
he will not cause any more trouble. So, Jeremiah was left imprisoned in the deep well with no food or water. He sank into the muddy bottom and was left there to die. Help! Help! Is anybody there? Jeremiah called upon God once more, praying as he suffered. Even in this darkest of moments, Jeremiah never lost his faith. O oh Lord, show me your light. If you wish me to continue to spread your message and bring truth to the people, then I am sure you will spare me from this awful situation. Meanwhile, a man named Abed Melech, who was a trusted servant of the king, heard about what had happened to Jeremiah. Your Majesty, please, you must help Jeremiah. He has been thrown into a well and left to die. What can I do? I have already given permission for him to be thrown into the well. But it's not too late. We can still save him. Please send a group of men to lift him out of the well with ropes. Very well. Take 30 men from here with you and lift Jeremiah out of the well before he dies. The king was persuaded by Abed-Melech's words and sent 30 men to lift Jeremiah out of the well. Put these ropes under your arm. We are going to pull you up. Uh, he's heavy. We can't lift him up. Come on, everyone. We can do this. We must save Jeremiah. Thank you. I thought I was going to die down there. Don't thank us. Thank God. He has answered our prayers and saved you from the well. They pulled him up with ropes and saved him from certain death. And so, Jeremiah was spared from a horrible fate in the well. And King Zedekiah asked him once more for wisdom. Tell me, Jeremiah, now that you are saved, what other messages might God have sent you? But Jeremiah did not trust the king. If I answer you, surely you will kill me. And even if I gave advice, you would not listen. But the king made Jeremiah a secret promise so he could trust him. Jeremiah, you have my word. I swear on our Lord, who gives us breath, that I will not kill you or have you harmed. And with this promise, Jeremiah trusted the king. He was now ready to tell him the important message that God had sent to him about the fate of Israel and their enemies, the Babylonians. This is what the Lord God Almighty says. If you surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, your life will be spared and this city will not be burned down. You and your family will live. But if you refuse to surrender to the Babylonians, you will be captured and this city will be burned down by their officers. This is a very important message about the fate of our people that God has given me. It is very serious and you must surrender if you wish to live. The king was very disturbed by this message and made Jeremiah swear not to tell anybody what they had discussed. This conversation must remain a secret. If anybody asked you what we've discussed here, you must tell them that you were begging me not to send you away again. Jeremiah agreed to this deal. When people asked him what they spoke of, he told them exactly what the king had told him to, that he wished not to be sent away. The people believed him and in fact, Jeremiah stayed there at the king's courtyard until the day the Babylonians came 
just as Jeremiah had said they would in his message from God. The story of Jeremiah is one of a man who would do anything to stay loyal to God. He did not fear death or punishment. The most important thing was to carry the word of God to the people no matter what. Even when thrown in the well, Jeremiah did not lose his faith. Even when those around him wished to harm him and stop him from sharing his message, loyalty and trust in the word of God made sure that Jeremiah survived. The End